We grew a watermelon for the first time ever in Montana. We'll show you how we know that they're ripe and we'll open them up. Yep, so first year ever growing a watermelon. We're really excited. We actually grew more than just a singular watermelon. We grew a bunch of different watermelons. We have two different varieties in here. They are Wilson's Sweet and Tender Sweet Orange Watermelon. The Wilson's is a red and they are the little round ones right here. And the tender sweet, these big ones, these are supposed to be orange inside. So let's get them cut off the vine so we can show you what they look like inside and taste them today. Okay, so today we are going to be opening this one right here. And this tendril right here is what's showing us that this is ready to open. See how it's brown and crispy? Being that we've never grown watermelon before, we weren't quite sure how to tell when they're ready because it's kind of looked like this for a really long time. And that tendril is the key. We did open one earlier and that tendril had just started to crisp but was not brown and crispy. And it was just barely starting to turn a red color because we opened one of these other ones right here. So this one is ready based on the tendril. We're going to be cutting that one off in a minute. And we're going to be opening this one right here. It looks like it kind of died on the vine or something. I'm not really sure, but we're going to see if it's right inside. So I have my snippers. We're going to cut the cord on this one and on this one. And let's take them over and get them cut into. There's the big one. You don't see the weight on that. Yeah. I don't know how much it weighs. Pretty heavy. All right, so we have a tender sweet orange watermelon is the big one, and this is a Wilson sweet watermelon. Let's cut into this little guy first real quick. Hoping this one's right. Oh, yeah. It's red in there. Beautiful. Look at that. Smells really good, too. Really fresh smelling. Let's try this one. Ooh, a ton of seeds. Show you just how many seeds are in there. Mmm. That is really good. Mmm. Yum. But there are a ton of seeds. And so I'm not really thrilled about dealing with that, but in nature there are seeds and things, naturally. They exist, so. It'll be fine. No big deal. Yum. Okay. So there's that one. Time to open up the big one now. Let's just do it right in the middle. Hope we were right about that tendril. Ooh, that's a different looking. Yum. Smells pretty good, too. Let's try this one. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. That one is really good. Much better than the other variety, in my opinion. That's amazing. Holy cow. Yum. I like this one. And we ended up getting quite a few this year. I'm really excited about that. I personally haven't had many orange colored watermelons, so that's a nice flavor. I like it. Mmm, that is so yummy. Okay. So before I get him back in here to come and taste them for you guys too, I want to talk a little bit about the plans next year with our watermelon for us where we live. Growing watermelon has been something that we've tried years and years and it has never been successful until this year because we put them in this greenhouse. That's really what pushed it over the edge and allowed us to grow watermelon. We we're in zone four and we had frost this year on June 19th, and we've already received our first frost this year outside. I think it was September 19th. So that is a short growing season, and this greenhouse has made it possible to be able to grow things like watermelon. Next year, what I'm planning to do is to trellis our watermelon, similar to what you see behind us here on cattle panels. 
like we did the cucumbers. This year, I kind of just let them sprawl out. It was an experiment. We threw them in just thinking, oh, we've never grown one, but now we have this greenhouse, so let's give it a shot. And I'm really glad we did because we learned we can do it. And next year, I'm planning on doing it again. At one point earlier in the season, I said, ah, oh, we're not doing watermelon again. That was a waste of space in the greenhouse. Now I'm going to be doing watermelon again, but we're going to be growing them vertically to avoid that big mess that you saw over where we were. It was hard to weed around them. That was tricky, and we just wasted a lot of space. So when we do grow them vertically, I'm planning on supporting these, the watermelon that do grow on there, because they probably will be quite heavy. If you know about growing them vertically, if that's a necessary step, I would really appreciate you leaving that in the comments. And also, if you have an idea of a really good variety that maybe doesn't have so many seeds or has a really short growing season or is really prolific, I would really like to hear that in the comments. So please leave that, drop that in the comments if you have a suggestion, and we would love to try it next year. Now let's get him in here to try some of these watermelon. I'm going to have another bite of this one. This one's really good. It's good. It's just like a different flavor than a typical watermelon that I've had from the grocery store. Something else I did learn this year about growing watermelon that I'm going to share because it's... This, this is new to me, so a lot of people, they'll probably say, oh yeah, I already knew that, but I thought I'll just pass it along. When I prune these next year, I will prune them similar to the way that we prune a cucumber plant. So pretty much just removing all the suckers is what I decided to start doing after the season had kind of went on to get these to set some big fruit, because for a while it was like we just had a bunch of vines and they weren't really setting big fruit that was growing into much of anything. Once I started pruning them back, that's when I noticed, oh man, we have some watermelon growing in there. While I'm on the topic of pruning, it came to mind that another thing that I did to prune was I would find the end of a vine and trace it all the way back to where a fruit was, and right after the fruit is where I would actually also cut it. There were times I sacrificed a few little fruits, but not many, and then I would just toss that piece so that it kind of ended up looking like this, and that helped our production. So there's a tip to prune them similar to that. That's how we experienced success this year. Part of the reason, anyways. Which one looks better? This one. This one. The red? Oh, you think the orange? Okay, we're trying the red one first. Everybody taste. Ready? Well, it's good. Orange okay. one next. I want this. Mmm, yeah, orange one's good. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Way sugarier. Okay, Tastes like one? candy. Holy cow. I want more. This is one of the best watermelons I've ever had. Isn't that a different flavor? Mm -hmm. Way more sugar. Mm -hmm. Way more sugar. Taste this one. See if it tastes better. No. <laughs> <laughs> Get that from her mom. Wow. One thought on why this one might not be quite as amazing as the other one is because of how it was on the vine. It looked like it had kind of died off. The other one of this variety, this Wilson Sweet that we did harvest earlier, was much more tasty than the one that we tried today. So that is just something to consider. We're not throwing out this variety by any means. What do we think? Which one's better? This one. It's the best watermelon we ever had. Yes, that one. Miss. It had. It tastes like candy. It's the best one we ever run. Well, that's it. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm glad we've experienced a new success this year. If you're interested to see the kind of things we're growing on our channel, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. Bye. 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 Like and subscribe to this video, and thank you for watching this video. We hey. are family. <laughs> we are family. Mm-hmm. How's that one? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs>